All right, mates, back. welcome back to the channel. We are going to talk a little bit about the Susquehanna. Um, obviously, you know, guys, um, what's been happening in the region here with the um, water temps and the aromatic temperatures being between 90 and 100 going into this week. Um, not much is that different, believe it or not. I mean, the, the bodies of water for the Susquehanna and the Upper Potomac are, are, are a lot alike and different in a lot of ways. Forage elements are very, very similar in, in a lot of the stages. Um, and so when you're matching that hatch with your baits, that's an easy one, um, an easy transference in terms of your tackle um, when you're fishing the Upper Potomac or you're fishing um, the Susquehanna. Susquehanna has deeper water in a, <laughs> in a lot of areas. It is a massive river. The Susquehanna is a wider river in most stages and sections of the river. Um, the composition of the bottom floor. I find the Upper Potomac to be a lot more sandier, meaning if you're wading or you're out of your kayak and you're tethering your kayak or in that situation, you, you're walking, you're stepping, you're going down about four inches, five inches in the bottom composition, okay, because it's sand. It's not a hard bottom. Now, when you're in the Susquehanna and you're in the Upper Potomac this time of year, that is also a great time to scout for next season, whether it be because the water levels are under three feet in most parts. Some areas, if you watch a lot of videos on TikTok, um, walking out in the Potomac and the Susquehanna, they're under a foot and a half. I mean, rocks are exposed everywhere. The ledges are exposed. Um, and so when the water rises back up, you know, those ledges are going to come into play again. I don't, they're not really in play other than if you can find ledge with uh, cooler water running over it um, and then maybe a deeper area or, um, you know, unexposed rock area that would signal deeper water sometimes. Um, shell beds, um, like in the upper Potomac, that they're just five to eight yards off or ten yards off of that ledge area. Um is where you're going to find the smallmouth bass. Um, when you're talking about, like right now, the Upper Potomac is a foot and a half in the Piedmont stage. You can walk all the way across from the Maryland side to the Virginia side um, without it, you know, getting to your waist or even some people's knees. Um, and so where, what do the fish do? What's their behavior? Where, where, what's going on? Well, they want to beat the heat, okay, for one. So they want to find deeper water. And that deep water could be one foot more water than the rest of the river. Um, they're going to find the channel. Like when you talk about the Susquehanna, there are some channels in the Susquehanna um, that when I, mean, when I mean by channel, I just mean cuts in the river in which you can follow where the jet boats are going, where the non-jet boats are going, okay? If, if you're in the lower portion, lower section, below Harrisonburg, uh, Harrisburg, sorry, um, you, you can find that because if the bass boats are using that, you know that's deeper, Okay, and so that's a good place. If you're pre-fishing, that's a good place to, tr to spend a little bit of time because it's deeper water than the other two and a half. I think the Harrisburg stage is about 3.2, um, which is just like the Edwards Ferry stage in the Upper Potomac. Um, now, some rains moved in last night, but if whatever happens here doesn't impact here. It's what has to happen up in the river. So a lot of people are going to tell you that on the Susquehanna that you should be throwing um, whopper ploppers and you should be throwing, you know, top water and you should be, um, you know, um, crankbaits, uh, finesse, um, different things. Um, and so, which while that may be true um, to some extent, um, I think you have to fish different. Uh, when you get below two feet, Smallmouth bass are skittish. They're always skittish, but but I noticed that if you drop, for example, and I witnessed this on the Susquehanna, one of the most popular baits right now on the Susquehanna, I mean, for, for locals is obviously that, that are dialed in. Most people like me will fish um, tubes on the Upper Potomac and the Susquehanna. But a lot of people come to the Susquehanna for, for big events from other parts of the country and they don't fish tubes. A lot of them are big time power fishermen. So they're going to be throwing whopper ploppers and, um, you know, spinner baits. And, and typically a spinner bait would be in the top five baits. Um, 
but spinner baits are conditional and right now you don't have the conditions for there to be an effective spinner bait bite and the reason why is the water is so low now if the water was to change from two and a half to three feet and rise to five feet um, in the next few days well then you would transition to a spinner bait the rising water levels is perfect for throwing spinner bait and, and, and any kind of moving moving baits um, and this is independent of that early morning window that we all know exists if you live here um, where you can throw just about you can throw frogs you can go for, for, throw spooks you can throw ploppers you can throw all that in that early 6 7 30 7 45 but then my heat hits and that bite just goes away so if you can so that's always there for an opportunity depending on where you are on the river on the Susquehanna um, you have you've got the grass element you've got some structure element you've got the rock element I mean so you have the different elements of where these fish are going to align themselves with even in shallow water but the problem is when you're in two feet water or less the advantage of kayak gets mitigated okay your stealthness gets mitigated then say if it was five feet of water okay because you've got the sun bearing down on you in your kayak and depending on how you position your kayak or how you come at approach the fish wave fishing the sun is by if you're seeing your shadow or your kayak shadow or i mean more importantly if you're wade fishing if you see your body um silhouette shadow in the water um the smallmouth are going to be bolting they're going to be spooked because those shadows when you throw that bait from from that side as that bait comes it creates a shadow over the water and then hits the water okay and smallmouth bass and two feet of water are very cognizant of what's going on all around them um secondly a lot of people will default automatically to for example a jackhammer um, which is an awesome bait. I'm not going to dispute that. Okay, um, I don't throw jackhammers, but I, I have tried jackhammers. I prefer custom, which I'm going to show you some options. But but jackhammer is an incredible bait um, for sure. There's no doubt of that. Um, no doubt of that. Um, but jackhammer also has that ability of being big, and what I mean by big is it hits the water big. It hits the water and then your your retrieve it's, it gets going so fast and quickly and under normal circumstances of four four to six feet three to maybe you know in the low end but mostly four to six and up that's an extending rate of just with that blade right right away boom okay um gets going gets attention but in two feet of water i watched it mates as soon as that hits the water, okay, because you're dealing with a water column that is literally like, if you count the rocks and you displace the rocks, okay, from this, you're really only looking at 18 inches of water. And that thing hits it, okay, um, it's just, you know, so downsizing, if you're going to throw that, um, you know, chatter baits, um, which you have to give them, you have to give it a go. Um, no matter what, any day you're on the Susquehanna, any day, anywhere, really, um, to see if that bite is up. You want to go a little bit, you want to downsize um, your uh, your chatterbait. And you want to, you can downsize, and here's a, little, here's a trick, at least for the Susquehanna anyway. Um, you can downsize your, uh, your jig weight, um, your overall, and then displace it with your trailer. So what kind of action do you want to cause in the water column um, with your trailer, okay? Now, when you're in shallow water, I'm going to do a whole chatterbait video um, for our chatterbait, for the custom chatterbaits, because it's important. Um, every bit is important as to which chatterbait you choose to throw. It's equally important for you to determine which trailer to put on that chatterbait, because that trailer is going to determine whether or not you spend all day yanking that chatterbait out of rock or off a structure or whatever you want you want something of of a like here's a smaller size chatter okay for the Susquehanna with a typical Susquehanna upper Potomac trailer or grub plenty of people fish grubs 
by themselves, effectively, on the Susquehanna, okay, in the upper Potomac. So this is a great trailer for, for the Susquehanna, okay? You see, this one is a little different. You compare like a chatterbait, you compare the line of Z-Man and some other chatterbaits on the market, your head often is going to what is going to be, um, it's going to determine really how effective you are in terms of keeping your bait in the water and not hung up or not, you know, um, and how it moves through the water. Everyone talks about the blades and there's different kinds of blades, um, nickel blades, copper blades, gold blades, silver blades, stealth blades, um, now they're black, okay, there's people do all kinds of stuff. But if you look at that, you want like a rounder, okay? So you're not getting, so as that hits the rock, and that's what you want to do on the Susquehanna, okay? You don't just want to throw this thing and burn it across the water as fast as you can, okay? Um, same with the whopper plopper. Now, are you going to get strikes that way? Yeah, but you're not going to get quality bites that Quality bites are going to come on the Susquehanna and the upper Potomac, when you allow that chatterbait to kind of slow and down and move off of rock, because there's tons of rock in both those rivers, right? How it does that is that curvature, okay? It keeps it from getting, so it hits that rock like this, comes, bounces off, and you can start your retrieve again as soon as you hit, you feel it hit that rock, and then pause it. That's when you're going to get strikes. Okay, the other thing is the trailer is essential with the spinner bait in this scenario because you want a, you want a, you want a um, trailer, okay, that is going to roll, okay? You don't want one, and this is where so many people I've experienced that throw shad style trailers um, that are popular um, on the back of chatter baits on rivers because of their profile set, they don't roll. They're really narrow in their body. They don't roll like a beaver is going to roll, okay? This style is going to roll with the chatterbait and keep you from getting hung up. One of the things that you can do on the Susquehanna and the Upper Potomac that I found extremely effective um, when you downside is you don't need to use, you don't need to use a trailer, okay, um, if you really want to stay lighter. Um, but you can simply use a tube mimicking the crawl, okay? The tube men being the crawl, because that's what they're feeding on. If you check that video out of the native crawl versus the rusty crawl, um, was out in the river and there's literally thousands of freaking crawfish. Okay, that's what they're feeding up on. Okay, so you may not be a tube guy, like in terms of finesse, in terms of doing that. You may not want to put the jig head. How I would rig the tube right now and just did with some six. You know, everyone's gonna catch. You know, you. There's tons of 15s, 16s, and a halves in the Susquehanna. But when you want to get above that, um, you know, 16 and a half, 17 and a half, which will probably be, if you look at tournaments, that's pretty much the average, pretty much normal. The, you know, it's going to be someone who's catching in 18s and 19s. Um, they're going to come on uh, huge um, in the standings if you're looking at any tournament that's happening. Um, whether it be a local uh, kayak fishing tournament, a national event. Um, but which you can fish these a number of ways. You can do it the normal standard way, um, tube fishing, okay, finesse style. You can put it on the back of a chatterbait or uh, even a spinnerbait um, when the water starts to rise up if you want. And a lot of people will do the standard, run the jig head through and pull the eyelet out. And then you've got the jig, then you've got your jig set up for it, um, you know, and um, use that. But the most effective way, the most locals, you know, if you've grown up in, in if, if really if you've grown up in the Mid Atlantic, um, is to put this on a spinner, okay. And I don't mean like your traditional spinner bait. I mean your old like Johnson Beetle spin, okay. Very small, very compact, very thin wire, okay. Through the wall column, very fast. Um, uh, blades are moving really, really quickly, and you've got that in. And what you basically are doing is you're running that jig head through. And then you're going to attach that uh, top of the beetle spin um, to um, to the jig, eye, the eyelet of the jig. Okay, it basically creates a a spinnerbait more or less, but it's very, very small, very, very compact, very, very light. Okay, light is where you're looking for. You're not looking for like heavy 
things um, right now with the water level being two feet because when you throw like heavy jigs, like you guys know, I throw jigs a lot and because of just the rivers I grew up on. Um, and, um, you know, if you're going in that mid-range to high-range and jig, the weight of it is just dropping too fast. Remember, the water temperatures are above 80, 83 to 85 degrees in most parts, right? You know, a little lower in some places if you got like really good flowing water or maybe where the tribs enter in, you, you can see like a decline. Um, but so you throw, if you throw anything, you're, you're looking at falling. To, you only have two feet of water, two and a half feet of water. You're looking at falling too fast for these bass, unless you get on like a serious, like just reaction bait. Now, what can change is if you get cloud cover, if you get some rain move in, if you get any of that, that window of about an hour before you see those, that storm-ish, when I say storm, I mean like thunderstorm, I don't mean like massive storm, but you see that weather uh, change coming over the mountain, behind you, in front of you, you see that change in your skyline, the bite's gonna pick up. And that's where you wanna go. Noise, okay, noise, all right? Let's talk noise. Two most for me, um, and I've covered this before, doesn't change, go with what works, okay? Um, any square bill spinnerbait that looks like shiners, okay? Shiners are darters, minnows, fatheads, but mostly shiners, okay? The two things that, that the Susquehanna bass are feeding on right now depending on what section and stage of the river you're on. Okay, because it's summer, right? Craw and shiner. Okay, so your patterns for any other presentation, well, it doesn't have to be a crankbait, okay? It doesn't have to be square bill. It could be a diver. I would not use the diver um, because we're only in two feet of water. And so, you know, I mean, you could still use it, shallower diver, um, and pattern a crawl pattern or, or shiner pattern, but I would go square bill. Knock them off the rocks, okay? You're looking at um, not only knocking them, but you've got the knocks, okay? Different knocks, one knockers, rattles, you get all that stuff, okay? You in two feet of water. Um, but you definitely want to have something in the crawl pattern, okay? Because that's what they're feeding up on right now. And why? Because you just got through um, their uh, crawl burst in the spring, mid-spring. They're now juveniles. They're now everywhere. They're easy feeding, okay? Um, and so you absolutely have to at least have your crawl or crawl colored, okay? Depending on the water color, um, for finesse, if you're throwing worms and all that stuff, you definitely want to do green pumpkin. Um, not, this week hasn't really been a black and blue week because of the water, but I'm, I'm, it's a long river and depending on what stage you're in, depending on whether it's muddy or stained in a lot more areas than others, um, you know, the black and blue is going to work for you too, um, for sure. And I'll cover that here in a second. Um, the other thing that I change up to when I get that weather scenario or it's been really, really bright or really, really sunny and then it come, come, starts to come, um, you know, with the weather, a weather change, just don't sleep on this. Shallow water doesn't matter. Okay, you can run it right at the top. Perfect, perfect color here. Um, now, if you're not, don't really have that cloudier condition, and, you're, and you've got the sun out and you want to throw the jerk bait, I would throw your chartreuse colors, I would throw your greens, um, something with a lot more white um, on on that and be good to, good to go with that. Um, and that would say, that would also go for, for your chatterbaits, going with a white chatterbait um, or something with a white right there. And you could change up whatever trailer. Here's a beaver style trailer that does not get hung up in the rocks. Um, and that's you going to look for. The other color patterns, whether you're talking worms, shatter baits, or anything, is your green pumpkin. Okay? You want to go green pumpkin. Okay, now you can also change up that trailer to a little fluke on the end. That's going to get you through. That's That that on the back of that, look at that little wobble on the back of that shatter bait like that. Smallies love it. Okay? You can go the uh, color, or you can match it directly with, with, uh, with your dark. Now, the number one for me um, right now that I recommend to anyone um, and will continue to fish it until the bite stops is your hair jigs because you're only in two feet of water. Lighter hair jigs. Um, here's a perfect example right there. That is a modified hair jig with what you would call and classify as a net, right? 
the back of it. You don't have to put the net on there. You don't have to put the worm trailer on there. You can just flat out fish straight up. Black, all black, gold. Look at that. Green pumpkin, pumpkin seed. Killer right there. Crawl. You got some crawl soft plastic trailers. Old school. Look at that. Money maker right there. Looks like a crawl. Get you where you need to go. The weight of it will get you to be able to cast a little bit further away from you so you don't spook them. But it's not so heavy that it's going to just drop to the bottom very quickly. It's going to slow drop and you can let it drop and then give it a pop. Let it drop, give it a pop. Usually within three reels, you're going to get bit. If you're in the right area, the right sections, okay? And again, you do not have to use this. For me, what I have found is when you're in two feet of water, the added weight of the worm allows you to cast a further distance back from where you want to be to the eddy, okay? Or the, the other side of the ledge, okay? Or diagonally, okay? That, that's the effectiveness of this is the added to a lighter, using a lighter jig head, okay, um, for the fall rate, right? But then also adding a little bit more just to like get you into that casting distance. And this isn't gonna impact it too much, it's gonna go straight, and you've got this. So if you're using Z-Man, a lot of people like to use Z-Man, net nets, so you've got that, you're gonna get that action, it's gonna hit the bottom. And you're going to get that action moving at the top. And you can change these up. I always make sure that I chain take the colors with me. Okay? You can change them out. Red pumpkin. Um, or watermelon candy, sorry. Black and blue. If I want to use a black hair jig, throw some black and blue on there. That would be like this. Okay? Perfect. This is what you want to do. So you don't need to think, you don't necessarily need to go big, big, big right away. You want to go big and early in the morning, throw that whopper, use an all black. If you're on the Susquehanna, use an all black whopper plopper. If you're throwing um, a lot of other stuff, you know, crawl patterns, so your gold, um, brown, um, that kind of stuff is going to be your primary, followed by uh, your green pumpkin, sort of like every other river, um, is what you want to focus on in terms of what you're what you're what you're packing out but don't sleep on the crankbait even in two feet of water because of the, that noise bouncing off the rocks the crawl are on the bottom they're not at the top of the water column okay that's not where crawls live they live so you want something hitting the bottom okay when you're in two feet of water but your your goal is not to make it so you are just right because they're gonna go Okay, because remember, when you're in two feet of water, any sound that you make entering the water column is transferred, okay, further than when you make, when you say you throw the same thing in a reservoir that's 20 feet deep. That sound isn't transferred nearly as much across the water column. So bass aren't like spooked by you throwing that chatter or you throwing that, uh, you know, Top water bait, right? Whopper plopper, okay? Unless they're in the right in the middle vicinity. And if they're right in the middle vicinity, they're probably gonna freaking put their mouth on it, right? But in two feet of water, you can't play that game. You've gotta change the way you fish. Okay? That is the most important thing. If you're a wade fisherman, how you present it. The sun, where you are, um, above, below, in terms of where the current's coming. Diagonal, you know, for how you sit in your kayak, where the current is flowing, and where you're dropping that bait. Um, let the current, when it's lighter like this, let the, the current does the work for you. It's going to take you, okay, through that current, and then if you give it enough, do that current, and then down and off the current right to where they're waiting for, to where for ambush. Okay, just watch where the current flows around those rocks. Because that's where they're going to be in two feet of water. Is any place that there's a deviation in the change, 
If it goes from 2.5 to 2.8 to 3 and there's rocks, okay, bet if you've got some shade, even better, that's where they're going to be, okay? Um, and in grass, adjacent to grass, the biggins are going to, a lot of times, can be paired up, but there's also that one that's sitting on the edge, okay, adjacent to grass in just a little bit of deeper water um, that's sitting there waiting to ambush anything. Um, and so you get to pick those things apart with that. But I, 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 you know, have learned this lesson the last two years, and that's it's good to be open-minded and not be one-dimensional. Meaning, don't just go down the river throwing that whopper plopper, whopper and burning it, and whopper or you know or chatterbait, and you just keep moving and moving and moving. And two feet of water, that ain't gonna work. Okay, not on my rivers. Then it's not gonna work. I don't know if it works in Tennessee or Alabama or Georgia. It's just not gonna work. You gotta slow down and you gotta downsize your baits. Okay, no matter what, um, they come out of that like maybe that comfort zone. Maybe you're not a big time finesse guy. I know a lot of people don't like Nen rig fishing. I hear you, um, but sometimes you just gotta throw that. Uh, throw that finesse when it's 90 degree heat and you're fishing in two feet of water and nothing else is working so if you have any questions go ahead and comment hit me up you know that i'm always available um talk about any of these baits keep an eye out for that chatterbait specific video when we talk about custom chatterbaits the different blades the different jig heads the different hook sizes that you can put on those custom chatterbaits um that also play a big role in 